aboard the SSLA, Battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Attention, man! Attention, please take your seats. Quiet, man. Please be quiet. Please be quiet. Thank you. As always, it is a rare privilege and a brain-banging honor to be addressed by one of the greatest military men to ever adjust his shorts on this or any space vessel. Would you please give an SSLA welcome to the one, the only, your captain, my captain, Captain Skipper! Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Easy, son. Easy, son. I can't tell you what a thrill it is to see you sit there in frozen butt tingling awe, your leader. You stay! No, I'm sorry Commander Stink won't be here today, but when I see you again, I'll pass along your greetings. <clears throat> Men, I think before I give you my animal... Annual. Annual state of the ship report, an apology is in order. Why I ever decided to hose down the nurses' quarters with nuclear waste from the engine room still baffles me, and I'm sure you'll agree that they are sorely missed. I am sorry. Great men, great mistakes, Dad. Thank you, son. Great Thank man. you, son. Thank no you very much. Mistake! No, I told you he's not here. <clears throat> okay. Where do we stand here and now aboard the ship? Well, gird your loins, men. Not all the news is good. We're desperately short on food. I say we, but more precisely, you. The general food storage locker looks like the first Baptist church of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's practically empty. Now, I don't know what your people did with the food, but I personally requisitioned enough food for all 300 people aboard ship. Dad, uh, uh, there's 800 aboard ship. Oh? That wasn't a three, it was an eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, great man, great mistakes. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> That's enough, son. That's enough, son. All right. Fortunately, my personal food locker is stuffed, and you're welcome to all my scraps. You stay! He's not here, I told you. Now for some bad news for the 36 pusteroids aboard ship. I've tried. I really have to make a real attempt at liking you people, but I just can't. So tomorrow I'm dropping you off on the planet with the terrible stench. So named because of its decaying flesh-like odor. Finally... I deserve it, Dad! Easy, son. Ow! I said easy. Ow! Finally, finally. And for obvious reasons, the nurse's appreciation dance has been canceled. Great, man! Great mistake. Exactly. Oh, Thank you, sir. You Thank stink. you. I told you he's not here, he's Dad. He's coming. coming for Pete's sake. Now, will you get back to work, you idiot? Thank you, son. Thank you. That's enough. I think this is over. Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Good woman. Private eye. And this is my city, Los Angeles. I don't like kids personally. Matter of fact, I hate them. But they adore me, and it's just something that I've had to accept as part of the job. It's like the government says when the Indians ask about the nuclear power plant on their reservation. It comes with the territory. So, of course, I get asked plenty of questions by these foul-mouthed, pimply-faced, dirty-minded little slugs. One of which is, which tools and abilities do you need to be a P.I. like me? Dan Woman, Private Eye. First, you need the ability to size up a situation, to read the facts and draw an accurate conclusion. Two days after I hung my license on the wall, I discovered I had this God-given ability. I was walking to work when this truck caught fire and exploded. It threw the driver 225 feet straight up in the air, and he landed headfirst on a fire plug. Immediately, a crowd gathered around, but I'll never forget how I read the facts and responded. I ran over to the crowd and said, Give this guy some air. I think he's been hurt. Secondly, the ability to use various parts of your body. I have been blessed with rat-like reflexes which enable me to whip out my gun, cock it, and shove it in a guy's mouth before he can say, who the stink are you? It took me a long time to perfect that maneuver. For years, I was whipping my gun out, cocking it, and sticking it in noses, ears, and armpits. But the physical abilities that I have don't stop there. I can pick locks with my tongue, dial push-button phones with my rear end, and use my crotch to put out candles and small fires. Of course, punching like a Missouri mule goes without saying. The ability to use your fists is mandatory for a P.I. It took me exactly one day on the job to figure that out. I'd gone to a pool hall in Watts to follow up a lead. For Pete's sake, you can develop pictures in this place. My gosh, it's dark in here. You want something? Yeah, I tell you what, Leroy, I'm looking for this guy right here. You ever seen him? Of course, y'all look. Hey, wait. 
He looks a lot like you. Hey, it is you! <laughs> what a break. You killed my client's mother, didn't you? I don't know, but I am going to kill you. I think you better look at this. An official state detective's license. Uh-huh. But it's also your lunch. I ate that license, and it was the last, or nearly the last fight I ever lost. At least that badly. Anyway, those are a few of the tools, but I got plenty more. Because I'm Dan Woman, Private Eye, and this is my city, Los Angeles. I'm to uh, Grammy nominees tonight, and I, I got to apologize for some vicious things that I said. Let me start off with the gentleman we talked to earlier. Okay. I guess it was uh, last uh, February, Ron, that I said that Paul McCartney is so syrupy sweet that diabetics can go into insulin shock just by holding one of his records. And yeah, I I'm sorry, Paul. If you're listening out there, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It. You're great. You're super. Accept the apology. Uh, to John Cougar, I'm sorry about saying your music sounded like it was recorded in the trunk of a Chevy during a demolition derby. Oh, and that the only way you could get a voice like that was drinking a quart of muriatic acid. Oh, Ron. Man, he did, John, he did not mean that. I, know I, I really didn't, honest. I'd like to apologize right now, straight into that camera, to Donald Fagan. <laughs> I said that Donald Fagan is the only person in this business who could improve his hygiene by wiping Willie Nelson's headband across his body. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That's terrible. You're super. I'm sure you're clean. I'm sure your mother made you clean. I'm sorry. And he didn't mean it. I want to apologize to Toto for saying if Dorothy were to click her heels once more, you guys would be where you belong. In Kansas, sniffing fire plugs and chasing cars. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please accept do that. I don't know. It's the local guys. I know it. I know it. Could I apologize also to Elton John, who's up for best pop vocal this year? And I said that he is so morally disgusting that if he became a child molester, it would be hailed as an improvement by law enforcement officers from here to Liverpool. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I know you're sick, but I know that you're trying to help yourself. I'm sorry, Elton. I really am. It was about just about a week ago. I said something terrible about Paul McCartney that I want to apologize for. I said that the herpes sores on Paul McCartney's face have become so disgustingly ugly that only a blind man would record with him. That was Stevie Wonder, too, and, uh... Sorry. Finally, let me apologize Please. to Joe Cocker. I said that Joe looks like his spine is being attacked by fire ants when he sings, but having your spine attacked by fire ants would be better than having Joe Cocker ride in the same elevator with your sister. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I don't know why I said it, Joe Super. Please accept our please, apologies. Please accept our apologies. Thanks. Magic 106. Starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. <laughs> Wake up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The beaver's real sick. Oh, we know, Wally. I've known that since they had the cesarean, the little slime ball out of me. No, I mean really sick. Oh, yeah. He's got a 104 degree fever. Oh, wow. my. He's got the shakes. Oh, really? He's got a terrible cough. That's awful. <laughs> He's throwing up. No, oh, you're gonna no, kill. He's got terrible blotches all over his body. Oh, wow, what are we gonna do? He's been going into convulsions. Oh, no, come on. He's moaning in and out of consciousness. Oh, gee, His wait. hands are like ice and his neck is sweaty. Oh, my. Well, what are we gonna do? Uh, go back to bed, I think. Yeah, me too. Uh, good night. Shouldn't you call a doctor? All right, all right. <clears throat> Dude, hi, uh, hello, Dr. Patterson. Ward Cleaver. No, 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 it's not gonna be an Amway sales pitch. No, no. Uh, let me give you the symptoms. 12-year-old boy. Fever, shakes, coughs, puking, blotches, convulsions, moaning, fainting, burning, and freezing. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I thought, Doc. But he says he's dying. Dying? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Doc, uh, before we start talking ambo cabs and medical expenses, isn't there something we can do? Uh-huh. Uh, hang on. Uh, do we have a rectal thermometer? Yeah, it's in the kitchen. I use it for pot roast. Yeah, yeah, we got one. Uh-huh. Stick it where? I see. Uh, we got a problem, Doc. See, if June or me did that, th then we'd have two more sick people. Uh, look, what are his chances of surviving? Hey, I'm a gambler. Uh, see ya. Bye. What do you say? He's got a one in 200 chance of surviving. Oh, no. Mom. Oh, what, what? Uh, look, Wally, I think you'd better face facts. You're about to find out what it's like to be an only child. Gosh. Oh, well, look, look, it's going to be tough, but in time, the wounds will heal. Yeah, sure. Bye. The fever's oh, gonna die. The fever's gonna die. Mom, Dad, the fever broke. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Oh, no. Oh, give me a break. Bye, we stop. Stop. Join us again oh, next week oh, for the new Leave it to Beaver. I'm not sure this is a very good idea. Mm, hit great idea, Kimo Sabi. Look. 
We broke. They're opening at Saloon for Comedian, and Tonto get big laughs down at the reservation with his funny walk routine and general Custer imitation. But I... Me call myself Lenny Tonto, the nutty Navajo. But Tonto... I... Come on, Kimosabi. Let's go apply. You be my manager. Manager, well... Will... Then... Tonto applied and got the job. Later that night, backstage, before showtime. It almost showtime, Kimosabi. Tonto, why do you have that fake arrow sticking through your head? It funny stick, trust me. And now... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome a new comedian here at the Salt Lake Saloon. Would you please give a warm welcome to Lenny Tonto, the Nutty Navajo. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Lenny got to get his bowl fixed before he really hurt himself. <laughs> Me not see so many white people in one place since I get caught trying to rape white woman in Tombstone. <laughs> Lenny not your ordinary drunken sex crazed engine though. Lenny businessman first. Those hobbies I mentioned come second. <laughs> But seriously, Lenny was chief negotiator for Manhattan Island deal. He yeah, true. <clears throat> Beads and trinkets, big deal down on reservation. For entertainment, we take bed bugs out of teepee, put them in cornfield, and run back to teepee and wait for them to come back. <laughs> you know, Indians have word for corn. We call it maize. We also have word for Indian women. We call them bad karma. <laughs> Tonto was an overnight hit with his Indian put-down humor, but success went to his head as he was booked from Denver to San Francisco saloons. He began taking peyote and drinking more. His humor became surly and rude. Soon, the audiences stopped laughing. I'll tell you, white-faced dog rum tonyak something else. We not know we illegal aliens till you move your slimy carcasses out here. Hey, wait a minute now. What you looking at, lady? If I had face like yours, I'd wear loincloth overhead. Oh, now, wait a minute here. Yeah, well, your mama was at the Little Bighorn. Last time I saw her, she was wearing new piece of Indian jewelry called Tomahawk. <laughs> Tonto, 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 come on over for a second. Tonto, Ooh, come wee, tough crowd tonight, Kimosabe. Uh, it's not them, my friend. Tonto, hmm? you're burned out. I think it's over. Yeah, you're probably right, Kimosabe. Tell you what, let's take a few days off. Tonto, get a good tan, become Jewish, put on sunglasses and jewelry, and come back as Sammy Tonto Jr., the tap-dancing savage. Mm, I don't know about the that. The black foot with the gold feet. No, I don't know. The mohawk in motion. No, Tonto, I don't know. Red skin with rhythm. No, I don't know. The prancing Paiute. No, The I... Huni Zuni. I don't know. Starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. I'm home, everyone. Jude, Jude, he's home. He's home. Look, everyone, the Beaver has returned to his adoring family. Thank you, you little dork. Why did that unplanned pregnancy that Lib just come in? Yeah. I was afraid of that. Hi, Beaver. Hi, Wooly. I got something real neat to tell you. Wait a second. You come down with a rare incurable blood disease? No. And you ain't got nothing real neat to tell us. Everyone sit down at the dinner table. Whatever it is, it's boiling, so I guess it's ready. Smells real interesting, Mom. It should. About a third of it came out of the Tupperware bowls from the back of the refrigerator. Uh, how come it's orange? Remember that green stuff that we ate a year ago? Yeah. Well, it turned orange and became the dominant ingredient. Dad, what do you have that syringe in your mouth? I'm injecting Novocaine into my tongue to deaden my taste buds. Like your brain. Like your breath, scumbag. Shut up, boozebag. Uh, Mom, Dad, why don't we just eat? Yeah. Good idea, Wally. Would you like to say grace? I think we ought to pray after we eat this stuff. Guess what I found today? You're real parents, I hope. We are his real parents. <laughs> Quit torturing me. I mean, do you realize that after Wally was born, I was up for the Loins of the Year Award? But old Ward couldn't stop there. No, I had to keep going. Talk about going to the well once too often. Oh. <laughs> Amway's my way. Ward Cleaver speaking. Mr. Cleaver, this is somebody very important calling about something your son has. I see. Uh, do you want to say exactly who you are or what it is he has? No, I think I'd rather wait and see tomorrow's script. I see. They wrote us into another corner. Exactly. But, but, but everyone, tomorrow's episode is going to be real exciting and brutal. Uh, same time tomorrow? Same time. Yeah, got gotcha. you. All right, brutal, yeah. though. Very brutal. Find out how brutal later this morning as part two of the new Leave it to...
So I uh, you, you want to tell me who you are yet? I I think I'll wait till I come over and make a you know big dramatic announcement deal. Oh okay, okay. yeah. Right. You, you you want us to save you some of this uh, orange stuff that my wife made? No, I don't think so. Huh? I got some yellow stuff in the freezer. Uh, she says she's got some uh, yellow stuff that she can thaw out. No, I don't like to eat in front of strangers. I'm very protective about what the inside of my mouth looks like. Uh, okay, uh, how how are you going to talk to us then? I'll be wearing a bear muzzle. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, and uh, while you're over here, yeah. I'll show you how to make big bucks by only working a few hours a week, okay? Fine, but okay. if this is an Amway pitch, I'm going to throw a lamp at your groin. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, okay. Bye. 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 Well, that was a very important man your father was talking to. And believe me, he sensed Ward Cleaver's power and lusted after it mightily. What do you want, squirrel brains? Why don't you go on down and turn yourself into the Kathy Rigby Emergency Hygiene Center? Now, Beaver. What exactly did you find today? Uh, this folder right here. Let me see. Top secret. Some sort of report here. I think it's some sort of science fiction story, Dan. Let's see, uh, plan 63-83, codename Goodbye Ivan. Hey, 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 get around, everybody. Let's read this thing. It's only 350 pages long in small print. We probably got 15 minutes before that guy gets here. Sure, yeah, let's read that thing. Good idea. 15 minutes later. Gosh. Yeah, double, guys. I think I'll have a double. What would it say, everybody? I have dyslexia. It's a plan by the United States government to launch an all-out nuclear sneak attack against Russia later this year. Wow. And I think they're going to be real upset that we got this thing. Let's do what we always do when we deal with the government. Lie. Like on our taxes? Exactly. <laughs> oh, I wonder if that's him. Uh, I'll look through the people. Who is it, Dad? A guy wearing a bear muzzle and a gray suit. That's him? I bet he's with the CIA. Yeah, the yeah, CIA. That's, that's it. it. Ah, here goes. <laughs> yes? May I come in? Uh, yeah. Uh, nice bear muzzle there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I should tell you people up front. <clears throat> Right now, you should be aware that I am with the... The CIA, yeah, we know. Oh, uh, you know, uh, that was supposed to be my uh, dramatic cliffhanger for next uh, episode, you know. That, that was it? That's what, that usually bulls people over, you know. There's usually oh, wetting wow. their pants, stuff like that, you know. I can't... Sorry, I blew it. Wow, well, yeah. what am I going to do now? I... Well, I guess we'll have to wait. Why don't we just, next... just uh, mumble out for the announcer? Mumble out for the Mumble out. Okay, okay mumble start out. mumbling, June. Mumble, mumble, June. mumble, June. You too, Wally. What will happen when he finds out they have the secret report? Find out tomorrow on the new Leave It To... That was lost by a special government courier. Document? Gosh, no. The Beavers brought home everything from head lights to F's and math, but document? Gosh, no! No way! Uh -huh. He didn't do that. What's that on the dinner table? It's a document the beaver brought home. Yeah, that's what it is. I see. Uh, hey, hey, if that's the document to which you're referring, please feel free to retake said document and to demonstrate to the beaver how important it is not to bring home documents, feel free to bludgeon him into a coma with your bear muzzle. All right, now look, look, who all read this document? Just the beaver. Yeah, he practically has got it memorized. Then I'm afraid I have some bad news, Mr. and Mrs. Cleaver. Oh, that be? Right, I'm going to have to take your son beaver away from you. Okay, go on. Hmm? You, you said you had some bad news. That's it. <laughs> Boy, is that What's wrong with you people? Uh, oh, where are you taking him, sir? Let us just say the United States government is not without resources when it comes to dealing with security risks. I just hope those resources are real painful and take a long time. Now, now did anyone else in this room read the contents of this document? No, uh, 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 me personally, I'm blind. My dog's over at the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I'm a functional illiterate. All right, very well. Uh, say goodbye to your family, then. Goodbye, Wally. Don't worry, Beave. Someday you'll look back on this and laugh. No, he won't. Uh-uh, no way. Oh, Hush. Uh, goodbye, Mom. Yeah, so long, Twerp. Bye, Dad. Yeah, right. Uh, goodbye, Ivan. A uh, beaver. Ivan! That's the code name! Why, you read, you all read it! Uh, look, look, it's okay. I'm glad we're blowing up Russia. Right, Jude? Blow them right out of their mucklock. Yeah, yeah, we like war. All right. You're all under CIA arrest. And all of you are coming with me. Oh, I need a mill town. Oh, look, look. This place we're going, uh, is there any chance of making any Amway sales? Where you're going, Amway doesn't even know about. Oh, well, now, I'm going to have to argue that point. I mean, they know everything. No, they don't. Yes, they no, do. No, they don't. They know exactly what will happen, will happen to the Cleavers. Yeah, Find out on the next episode of the new Leave It to Beaver. So where are you taking us? To SRP, Security Risk Prison. How long do we have to stay there? For the rest of your lives. Danny, Moe, and Jack. Gosh. Oh, I knew this.
this was going to be a terrible week. First lemon pledge went up a nickel, and now this. It may not be so bad. Uh, tell me, will our cell have a wet bar? Of course not. This is terrible. It's all the beavers. Fault. All right, let's get going. Hey, uh, can, I, can I take this vase with me? Uh, which vase? This one right here. Gosh, Dad, you knocked him out. Gouge his eyes out with your thumbs before he comes to. Gosh, Mom. You're a little radical, aren't you there, Jude? Then douse him with lighter fluid and set fire to him. Gosh, Mom. Your mother is sick, boy. boy. Well, I haven't had a milk town in over an hour. What are you doing, Ward? I want that bear muzzle. Bear. All right, I'm running for it. You can stay here or come with me as long as your name doesn't begin with a B. I'm coming. I guess I will, too. I'll lose this tan inside a week in prison. The beaver can come, can't he, Dad? <laughs> of course he can. Uh, beaver, just bring along that vase. Which vase, Dad? This one. <laughs> with your thumbs. Knock it off, June. Uh, all right, I'll meet everyone in the car in 10 minutes. One suitcase per cleaver. Okay, Come let's on. go. We're going to get it. Okay. 10 minutes later. Everyone in. Yeah, and I've got three mill towns in my gut. Uh, I'm here too, Dad. Uh, all right, I don't know where we're headed, but we're running for our lives. You two get some sleep. Right, we're. Yeah. Okay, okay, Dad, I'll right. be glad to. Five hours later. <sighs> where are we, Dad? Who knows? We could be in Missouri by now. Look. A Ralph's. Yes, yeah, stupid. A <laughs> Ralph's. You've been driving in circles all night. I wondered why the gas station guy said, check the oil, Mr. Cleaver. But brains. Yeah, Mom? What was that? I uh, <laughs> put the beaver in my suitcase, Mom. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Where the heck is the announcer? I don't know. <clears throat> what are we going to do? Find out what the Cleavers will do next time on the new Leave it to Beaver. For Pete's sake, pal. You Sorry. better learn your lines. I mean, there's a cue there. I know. I know. I know. I know. Starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Look at this sleazy dump. Yeah? Well, at least it's clean. That's more we can say about our house. You miserable slug. And quit drinking booze out of that bear muzzle. Make me! Look, look, let's get some sleep. Me and the skank with the pearls around her neck will sleep in that bed there. Wally, you sleep in the bathtub. Right, Dad. What about me? You sleep on the toilet, and with any luck, you'll fall in. And believe me, if I hear a kaplunk sound, I'll flush it so fast, you'll be treading sewer water before the bowl refills. It's all his fault if he hadn't brought home that secret report. The one about the U.S. launching a secret nuclear attack. Against Russia later this year. That's the worst expository dialogue I've ever heard. Why, it's dumb. Mom, Dad, be honest with me now. Now, am I losing my tan? No, oh, you're looking no, good, you're Sandra. Look but look at this dump. Neon sign flashing on the wall. Oh, we need some mournful uh, saxophone. Knock it off, Beaver. Change the radio station for crying out loud. Sorry, Dad. Let me see what we can get here. Idiot. The Ward Cleaver family is being sought by the CIA for treason. You spot them, gun them down on sight. I'm Sharon Dale, and now it's back to more music on Magic 106. Come Trumped up a phony charge. What are we gonna do? I am losing my tan. I just know I. I, I I'm gonna get us out of this. I'm gonna get. Us yeah, out you of bet, me. you oh. moron. I gotta see this. Hello, operator. Get me Washington D.C. The White House. White House. Ha ha ha. Well, you're paying for this call, butt brain. I'm surprised he knows how to use it. Yeah, me too. Hello, White House. Yes, this is the White House. I'd, I'd like to speak with President Reagan. Yes. This is Beaver Cleaver. Let me up. M Mr. President, this is Beaver Cleaver. Uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry I found that report, but we won't tell anyone. No, sir, but I don't think you should try and bomb Russia because they'll kick our rear ends up around our shoulder blades. I see. You, you could very well be right. Really? He says I'm probably right. He says he's going to call off the CIA and we can all go home. All right. Oh, butt brains got us out of the gas. Oh, yes, sir. Shh. We're, yes, sir, we're real good Americans. You tell him, Beaver. Except my dad cheats on his taxes. I want... What's his name? His name is Wood Cleaver. You idiot! His social security number. You stupid golfer! Four, five, three, Join us again nine, next week eight, 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 for the new Leave it to Beaver. Well, ladies... I'll let you talk me into this. Look, taking part in the United Space Council Boxing Championship will be a memory that'll last forever. Yes, yeah, so will the scars. Not if you do what I showed you. Remember, throw the left to the body, and the right to the head, and then a left uppercut and baby... <laughs> all you'll see is 180 pounds of meat looking for canvas. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Car 
Carl Bangerpot. How are you, you old, uh, you old, uh... River dog. River dog. Good to see you. <laughs> Carl and I met in one of these fights 20 years ago. It was a different weight class back then, huh, my uh, friend? Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I gotta tell you, son, your old man threw what had to be the dumbest combination I've ever seen. What was it? A left to the body, a right to the head, and then a left uppercut. Uh, he threw that stupid thing, and I hit him so hard, I moved the cleft in his chin to the back of his neck. Hey, is it still back there? Let me see. Yeah, it's still back there to the back of your neck. <laughs> yeah, take, take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. <laughs> Sounds like a real nifty combination you taught me. Just throw it fast. Okay, here comes the first round. Go get him. Uh, where's your mouthpiece? Uh, do you knock it out? I swallowed it. Okay, hang in there and go get him. I can't. I can't. Go get him. Three brutal minutes later. Okay, come on over. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> no, 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 don't quit. Don't quit. Where, hey, wait, where's your mouthpiece? I swallowed it. Oh, boy. I swallowed it. Hang in there. <laughs> Remember. I don't want to remember. Dun, 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 oh, no. dun, 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 All right, Rocky. Get in there. Go get him. Get him. Three grotesquely bloody, vicious minutes later. Right. <laughs> come on over. Come on over. I quit. I don't blame you. What? <laughs> I had 200 bucks bet that you could go three rounds. You let me go through that for 200 bucks? Yeah. You piece of garbage. Shut up and give me your mouthpiece. I swallowed it. Well, what, what happened to that uh, cleft in your chin? I don't know. It's on the back of my neck. All right. Oh, all right. Boy. Listen, you owe me nine bucks. No, for what? For the mouthpieces. I ain't paying for your stinking lunch. I can't believe this. You bet me. I'm not paying for those mouthpieces. You're a rubber maniac. It ain't my fault. You ain't paying for Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Said don't run into no cook among us. I'm sorry. It's Coenga. It's sunset in Coenga, fourth floor in oh. Coenga. Yeah, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Now listen, uh, I, I, now he stopped breathing. Doesn't he, don't you only have like three or four minutes uh, before the permanent brain damage sets in after they stop breathing? It, it all depends. Now, what does he do for a living? It's a disc jockey. In that case, he's got eight or nine minutes. All right, could you hurry then? Could you hurry? Sure, then? yeah, be right. right there. Thanks a lot. Hang on, my friend, if you can hear me in that coma state. It's 8:53. Time for your hero, Dan Woman. Yeah, that's me, Dan Woman, Private Eye, and so on and so forth. Hey, your mail's here. It's about time, Chief. Well, it's been raining, you know. Listen to him whine. Oh, get out of here before I shove that airmail stamp so far up an orifice that the next person will see it'll be Noguchi at your autopsy. Oh, yes, I'm scared. I'm shaking yeah, in my... Get out of here. <laughs> All right, let's get to the mail. Dear Dan Woman, Private Eye, this is to officially notify you that you are no longer under retainer. How anyone could run up a $300 bill for grout while following my husband is beyond me. Signed, Arlene Cramden of Torrance. That's pretty stinking simple, Arlene. While I was tailing your cheating, worthless husband, I pulled into a Texaco station where upon the brakes on my brother's gremlin petered out, sending me crashing through the men's and women's room. Thereafter, the remainder of the afternoon was spent regrouting toilet journals and wash basins. I did not send you the bill for eighty-five fifty to fix said gremlin, nor the $35 bill for the emergency room fee for the little grease monkey I pinned next to the lubrack. Let me just conclude our relationship by saying you're a skank and your marriage is over. Oh. Dear Dan Woman, Private Eye, you don't know me, but... <laughs> I must get ten of these you don't know me, but letters a week. Welcome to Come On City. <clears throat> but I saw you two nights ago at the 7-Eleven on Sunset Boulevard where that little Vietnamese store manager forced you to eat a package of Gaines Burgers after you spit a half-eaten ding-dong in his face. I'm sure he just caught you by surprise. Anyway, I was wondering if we could get together at my place for dinner. I'm getting my last hormone shot on Tuesday and the silicone implants on Friday. Signed, Bob, soon to be Bobby in Hollywood. Get out of here, you stinking piece of garbage. Try it out loud. Dear Dan Woman, Private Eye. Have you ever been Q-tip box whipped by an elderly pharmacist who shoved a disposable razor up your nose and then made you swallow a package of suppositories after you spit a half-eaten Gainsburger in his face? Signed, Tommy from Van Nuys. Quit following me, Tommy! Besides, I was weakened from a rumble outside a convenience store, and believe me, that old geezer was on drugs or something and couldn't feel pain. Anyway, if you want to write me, send your letters to Dan Woman, Private Eye. My street... Santa Monica. My city? Los Angeles. My zip? I don't know. The state of Utah. No, thank you.
I'll do my crimes here in California where capital punishment is defined as Jerry Brown's term in office. Let's go to the phones. Hello. Have you ever taken a lie detector test, Mr. Johnson? No, but I have taken a lie detector along with $55,000 worth of crime lab equipment from the LAPD. But no, I've never taken a polygraph test. I don't like answering questions that begin with, did you on the night of? Because nine times out of ten, I did. Ray D. Johnson, you're on the air. Hi, uh, Mr. Johnson, with all your experience with him, is the L.A. Police Force uh, a good one? Unfortunately, yes. And I really appreciate the fact that they avoid cliches during confrontation. I can't tell you how sick I am of hearing, throw down your guns and come out. Once in Signal Hill, I heard, throw down your guns and hang yourself. Once in San Francisco, I heard, throw down your guns and kiss me, you fool. Once in New York, I heard, throw down your guns and toss out your wallet. But the classiest force is in Beverly Hills. They say, throw down your guns. Let's have lunch. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. You're welcome. You're on. Hello. Uh, you, you is full of devilment or a rascal, Mr. Johnson. That's all I want to say. You, Fair you, you enough. full of devilment. Thank you very much. Right now. Well, I got to go to a reunion of sorts. Six years ago, 12 people voted to place me in a state-operated condo for three to five. I very painstakingly rounded them up, and I'll show them a new meaning to the words, a hung jury. This is Ray D. Johnson saying, I'm a lot like herpes. I show up unexpectedly, and all the wishing in the world won't make me disappear. Oh. The new Leave it to Beaver, starring Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. As you recall from last time, the beaver was caught cheating on a test in Mrs. Lander's classroom. We now pick up the action in Principal Jenkins' office. Thank all of you for coming down here on such short notice. <laughs> That's all right. June was just lashing a boil on her leg, and I was sitting around the house getting drunk. How oh, fine, fine. And thank you as well, Wally, for your presence here. Ah, that's quite all right, sir. Good to see you again, babe. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Miss Landers. You're looking great, stud. <laughs> thanks. Uh, the reason for this meeting is because... The beaver here did something, right? Either on the playground or in his past. The little dark... I'm afraid the beaver was <clears throat> caught cheating. He was what? Oh, good heavens. Gosh, Beave. Give me a mill town. I'm afraid so. He was caught red-handed. Uh, right, Miss Landers? That's right. The little scumbag's got the moral fiber of a drug-sucking weasel. Gosh, Beaver. I'm sorry, everyone. I didn't mean for it to turn out like this. That's what your mother said in the delivery room after they cleaned you up. You are the only baby in the history of births that'll look better before they hose you off. Now, now here at Sunny Liston Junior High, we have a very strict disciplinary code for cheating. It runs the gamut from public humiliation to, in extreme cases, execution. Is this an extreme case? Yes. <laughs> Now, now, unless the beaver can render a tearful plea for reduction of his sentence, execution will be carried out. Beaver, do you have anything to say at this point? Mm, well, just that I'm real sorry, everyone. And it'll never happen again, I, I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're talking firing squad. <laughs> One hour later. Uh, students, students, uh, students, please be seated. Please, 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 please be seated. Please, thank you very much. The reason you have been called here today is to witness, as a result of cheating, the execution of one of your own classmates, Theodore Beaver Cleaver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, without further ado, would you please give a Sunny Liston Junior High School big welcome to the ROTC Rifle Unit, who will perform the duty. Come on in. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. I don't know, but I believe. I don't know, but I believe. Beaver look like a piece of cheese. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and whenever you're ready. No, please! Oh, quit that ridiculous whining, you piece of garbage. Uh, uh, come on, take it like a little punk, you piece of snot. All right, uh, Captain, please begin the execution. Ready, men? Aim! Fire! Huh, what? Babe, wake up, wake up, you're dreaming. You... <laughs> It was? Yeah. Oh, well, it was horrible. Hey, you little goof, you just had a nightmare, that's all. Oh, boy, thank goodness. You know something, Wally? What's that? I think this is going to be a great day. Yeah, I... well, get out of bed and... Okay. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Wally? Sorry, Bean. Mom, Dad, the beaver wet his bed again. Oh, no. Oh, no. I want to kill him! Oh, get him 
Join us again next week for the new Leave it to Beaver. Humiliate you. We put, hurt you. and We're sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to apologize for some statements that I've made during the past week. I, Ron, may I begin by apologizing for something that I said Monday morning. I, a little bit after 6 o'clock, I turned the microphone on and I said that if Barney Clark had to share one night with you in a semi-private room, he'd reach over and pull the plug on his own machine. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't mean that. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing to say. I, I'm sorry. Please. Just, a, just a few minutes after that, I said, I came up with a long one for some reason. Did I you? Uh -huh. said, you're so gross and hideously ugly, as well as an embarrassment to your family, that if you were put in a snuff film and wasted, the producer would be named the Humanitarian of the Year by the ASPCA. The area where you lived would be awarded the neighborhood beautification plaque, and your parents would order you buried in an unmarked grave. On the other hand, I said... Oh, you're not through. Ladies and gentlemen, he's not through. I'm not through. On the other hand, I said if you were spotted by a pro-sterilization group, your picture would be put on their posters as reason number one. <laughs> oh, Ron. I'm sorry. Long and abusive. I heard him. Oh, it was. That was terrible. I apologize. So was what I said Tuesday morning. About mm -hmm. 8.15, I came on and I said that... A recording of your family eating a meal could be used by campers to scare wild animals away from their tents. <laughs> oh, let it be. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean awful, that. I, awful, awful, awful. Right. Wednesday. Oh. Wednesday, I said, with your intelligence, I doubt very seriously if you could even get a job as a maid at a roach motel. <laughs> Ron, I'm sorry. You were brutal. Sorry. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, something I said yesterday morning. Mm. 8.45, I came on and I said that at birth, you people were so wart-like that the doctors would have sworn that for the past nine months all your mother drank was compound W. And I said, as a matter of fact, there's probably a scar on your chest where one of the delivery room nurses tried to drive a stake through your heart. All right. Shameful, shameful thing to say. Shame terrible. Mm -hmm. I have... You know, it was just a few minutes later, I said, the only reason there are no cockroaches where you live is because after seeing the way you live, they moved out in disgust. No. Then this morning, um, just, just, what, just minutes ago, I said, there are a lot of things I want to see before I die. But top in the list would be the sight of a shark spitting out your swimsuit. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let me apologize deeply for saying just Two minutes ago, that in the disgust, in the <clears throat> disgust, this, right, this it's a is, terrible this thing. This is so terrible. Yes. My tongue doesn't even want to form the words again. I, deeply humiliated. This is deeply. I, I said that in, <clears throat> in the disgusting world of cooties, those that inhabit your body are known as lowriders. Let me apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. We're sorry. They'll never happen again. Honest, I promise you. Honest. The Our heroes. heroes. horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Well, this looks like a charming little town, Tonto. Mm, they all look alike to me, Kimosabi. Dirty jerkwater hell holes filled with scummy, pimply-faced white people. Our career going nowhere anyway. Oh, now, Tonto, that's not true. People are beginning to recognize us. Look, look, Tommy, it's the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Well, see, Tonto. Whoa, Silver. Mm, whoa. Hi, boy. Are you really the Lone Ranger? Yes, I am. I heard you were a homo. What? Hmm, where do you hear that? And that Tonto's a transvestite. Hmm, Tonto put an end to these rumors. Put that gun away, Tonto. Now, boys, I can assure you that I am a man. Why, I almost married a woman. Wait, look, here's, uh, here's your picture there, see? <laughs> that looks like my brother. <laughs> yes, well, and Tonto has never worn women's clothing. Right, Tonto? T Tonto, right? Hmm. Generally speaking, uh, no. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you boys went along now, okay? <laughs> I still think he's a homo. Me too. Oh, mm. boy. All these years on trail, and that's what it get us. Kids call us homo and transvestite. Don't worry, Tonto. Our luck will change. It just has buckaroos. Hi, Marty Finkelstein with William Morris Agency. I just overheard your conversation there, and do you know what you boys need? Huh? Mm, morphine. Tonto. Tonto. <laughs> Drug humor, that's very hip. But what you need is an agent like me, Marty Finkelstein. I can get you the 
big gigs. The kind of gigs Cisco Kid and Poncho are getting. Hmm, sound interesting, Kimosabe. I like the way the big red stud thinks. How about you, Pudgy? Well, I guess it's worth a shot. I guess. Hey, then it's settled. Can I see the engine over here for just a second, please? Mm, just a second. Sure, sure. Uh, your partner there, is he really a uh, homo? No, nah, no, nah, Dig, it doesn't bother me. It's cool, babe. I just need to know for marketing reasons. Hmm, him straight. Okay, fine, that's fine. That leaves out Frisco, but it, it's a big world. Hey, you boys wait here. I'll go get you a gig. Mm. Stay right here. Okay. Mighty Finkelstein will deliver. Okay, mm, I'll fine. go do that. We'll do that. <laughs> a few minutes later. Okay, okay, now we're cooking. Okay, it's starting to happen for you, boys. It's starting to happen big for you. I just put together a major deal. Mm, oh, great. Okay. Which one of you two is the fast draw guy? You know, the gunslinger type. Uh, well, neither of us, mm. really. Uh... Oh, boy. Okay, okay, we got a little problem here. Mm. What, 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 what? I uh, was just in the saloon, and uh, Jesse James happened to be at the bar, and I mentioned to him that you two had questioned whether his mother could chat about feminine hygiene protection for more than 12 seconds. Oh, no! Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, in about five minutes, he's going to be at the other end of the street. Now, it's your decision, but I think it's worth a shot. Hmm, right between the eyes. Uh, 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 I love his humor. Me, I really relate yeah, to me, too. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Fiegelstein, but I think we'll pass this time. Come on, Tonto. I think we'd better ride quick. Hmm, quick. Very okay. Quick. You could have been big. You could have been big. Uh, uh, Jesse! Jesse, yes. baby! Yes. Let's talk! Let's chat, baby! Come on, you and me, one-on-one. Uh, where are they going? Uh, don't, don't worry about them. It's just a homo and a transvestite. <laughs> Pretty humiliating, Kimosabe. Yes, it is. But, 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 but when I said you didn't wear women's clothing, you know, and you said, generally speaking, you didn't, mm. who did you mean, Tonto? It many years ago, Kimosabe. Mm -hmm. Tonto dressed like Squaw one time. Mm -hmm. Maybe two. I see. It, it just a phase Tonto go through. No more drag, Kimosabe. Hit all over. I hope so. I will Aboard the SS LA, battleship of Southern California, in another exciting episode of Space Patrol. Dad, Dad, we've got a problem. We darn sure do. Uh, Dad, what are you doing? I've shaved my legs and I'm gluing eating utensils to them. Why? I don't know yet, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Dad, that is really stupid. <laughs> That's what people said to Columbus and Edison and, uh, and, and to me last week when I had the men spray their food with bathroom air freshener. Yeah, Dad, and six men died because of that and 12 more are still in critical condition. Oh, but what we learned. Oh, Dad. The long-range returns of that kind of experiment could be awesome. Dad, we have got a serious problem in the reactor room. Yeah, well, so do I. I'm afraid if I cross my legs, this salad fork will ram itself up my keister. Dad, will you listen to me, please? All right. Now, look. Yesterday, the maintenance crew threw a load of used medical sponges down into the engine room next to a bucket of nuclear waste. Okay? Uh -huh. You following me on this? I'm following. Right, okay. And somehow the bacteria on the sponges has mutated with the nuclear waste, and we have got an alien being roaming around the ship. That's the uh, premise of this week's script? Yeah. Good heavens. I know. Sir Lawrence Olivier couldn't pull this one off. All right, it's a piece of garbage. All right, all right, all right. What for me? I, I know, I know. Now, look, look. Uh, where was this thing last spotted? In the nurses' quarters, Dad. Uh-huh. Where are the nurses? They're giving a feminine hygiene seminar in the Kathy Rigby Memorial Auditorium. Darn, I wanted to hear oh, that. I did, too, but that's good. Okay, here's the plan. All right. Don't say anything to the nurses. Right. Don't warn them. Right. Just let them walk in there and figure out how to kill it. Dad, are you kidding? No, no, listen. These nurses are highly trained. They'll come up with something. Oh, Dad! Listen, trust me, trust me. I know what I'm doing. The nurses will be back in their quarters in 15 minutes. Right. I'll meet you in front of their door in 20 minutes. Oh, Dad, this is crazy. Oh, this is 20 minutes later. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it's going too well. I don't think so, Dad. Yeah. I think we can scratch plan one. I think plan one's just about had it, Dad. Hey, uh, who's that over there? Uh, oh, I had up there. That's uh, Ramos. He's a Mendozoid, part of the uh, janitor crew. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, Ramos, uh, come on over here, my friend. See, you, Captain. I want you to go in the nurses' quarters there and tidy up. Oh, Dad. See? Uh, thank you, my friend. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Hey, Captain, why are you spraying me with that bathroom deodorizer? <laughs> Trust me, my friend. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay, this. go on in. <laughs> Oh, Dad, Dad, yeah. Brilliant, I know. <laughs> listen, listen, it took the bait. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no, it's... Uh, 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 the uh, thing's dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look. Oh, my... Ooh. <laughs> All right. Look, 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 it croaked. Dad, it... Oh, ooh. Ooh, my. It, got, it worked, Dad. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, I told you that air freshener thing would pay off. Okay. 
Two things. Right. First, call headquarters and have them send up some more nurses. Right, Dad, right. Then bring me a Band-Aid. Why? When I bent over just now, yeah. butter knife lopped off a hunk of my groin. Okay, Dad, I'll get a knife. I'll get a band Join us again next time for another exciting episode of Space Patrol. <laughs> Story of the Baker family who moved west from Texas to find oil in a field north of L.A and who now spend their time and money on high-priced lust in and around their city of Bakersfield. Hello? I was back. But now I want one million dollars and ten cents. Ten cents? I just took a business loss when I had to dial back. Oh, for, all right, all right, all right. Now listen. Bring the money to the corner of Dumont and Thoid. Dumont and Thoid, all right. There's a Leon's Liquor Land right there. Okay, I, yeah, I know. Just pull up in the back and I'll make the exchange with your wife. All right, now, now, now that's a deal. How about one hour from right now? Hmm, better, better, better make it an hour and a half. Lolita gotta go get treated for toxic shock syndrome. I know we should use a name brand. Shut up, you woman. Shut up. Shut up. Now, don't forget the gasoline credit card, either. I got it, I got it. But don't make it Union 76. Why? Moist gives me the creep. Me, too. All right, bye. all right, bye, bye. Sue Ellen, Sue Ellen, get in here now. Now, listen to me. Take all your jewelry, go hawk it, and take it to Dumont and Third and get the check back. But, J.R., that, J.R., that jewelry is worth a fortune. Well, when it's worn around your stinky body, it looks like cheap plastic anyway. Now, get going, oh. get going, get going, get going. Oh, go. A few hours later... Hello, J.R. Baker. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll say this here, uh, Eddie Lee. Oh, is everything all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, now I got a $212 billion check, $1 billion in cash, right. two of your cars, yes. and get this. What? I also got your wife. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. She's scared half the day. Yeah, we got your wife. She's your really wife. scared. So? So, uh, so, so, so if you don't give me another one million dollars, I was going to, uh, uh, I was going to, uh, torture your wife. So? Um, I, I wasn't uh, prepared for that reaction there. All right, now you listen to me. Uh, if you really do got my wife, uh, then you prove it by lopping off her nose or ear and send it to me in the mail. Okay. 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 Yeah, right. but 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 uh, you get another one million dollars ready. Okay. Right. Bye. Right. But yeah. Oh my goodness. My goodness. My goodness, Daddy. My goodness. You know what I'm doing right now? Oh, what, what are you doing there, son? Daddy, I am getting professional help. The best that money can buy. I'm gonna bring somebody in on this deal. It's gonna solve this thing for us. That woman. Private eye. Mr. Woman, this is J.R. Baker. I need your help. Speak to me, huh? All right, now here's the situation. Uh, My wife. Will oh, Dan yeah. Woman save the day? Find out later this morning with London and Engelman on the next episode of Bakersfield. Segment of the Wild Kingdom. And of course, Merlin Show, Mutual of Pacoima, can be seen, uh, I believe, on Channel 30. Hello. Merlin Parkins, Mutual of Pacoima here. M Mer this is London and Engelman. Good morning, Merlin. Ah, uh, good morning. <clears throat> Knowing the intelligence the two of you possess, I would guess you're calling about the 1402 policy named after the fallen Russian satellite and designed to protect you and your loved ones against the high cost of radiation poisoning treatment. No, no, Merlin. Uh, what we'd like to know is what is, is China's most dangerous animal in the wild kingdom? Although it's not an animal per se, it would have to be the Chow Lin worm. Mm -hmm. This tiny creature of only two inches long lays its eggs in the brains of animals and humans. My, how does it do that? By crawling up the nasal passage or the ear canal. Ooh, wh why does it do that? To uh, provide its offspring with a lifetime of food. Oh my. You see, as the eggs hatch, thousands of them by the way, the brain begins pushing against the skull, eventually causing it to burst killing the animal or human instantly. Oh, my. By the way, the word Chow Lin actually means brain buster. Does this happen quite a bit in China? Oh, Mr. London, a crowded street in Peking sometimes looks like a scene from Scanners. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, there is sometimes the information out of the Wild Kingdom isn't pretty. Well, thank you very much, Merlin. Uh, about the 1402 policy. Uh, I think we'll pass on that one, Merlin. <sighs> Now to take a break from the cruel, ruthless, crime-filled life of hectic Southern California and enjoy a loving episode of The Timmies. Stanley, 
Do you think Mumsy's all right? Of course I do, Karen Clarence. Oh. Well, except for that fungus I noticed on her scalp that's causing massive hair loss, which I believe is caused by lack of vitamin C. Y you believe she has scurvy? I'm afraid so. Do you, do you think it's serious, sweet sibling? Mm, not quite as serious as the red blotches on her face and arms. What do you think is causing those? Mm, I would have to say her heart. That sounds terrible, Stanley. It is, Clarence, but not as bad as that horrible rotting odor she emits. I noticed that. What do you think is causing it? Oh, a quick guess. I would say leprosy. This is devastating, Stanley. Yes, I know. What should we do? Oh, call Forest Lawn for rates and put an ad in the paper for a live-in maid. Should we let Mumsy rest and make her last few days as pleasant as possible? No, I think Mumsy wouldn't much rather go out on her hands and knees cleaning out the toilet bowl. You're absolutely right, Holly, <gasps> brother. I know. <gasps> Let's see if we can guess which duty she'll be performing when she finally craters. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. The lawn. I say the lawn. Dips in the lawn. Oh, I, I Join get, us I get again the bathroom next lawn. time for another loving episode of The Tiddies. Children. The lusty story of the Baker family who moved west from Texas to find oil in a field north of L.A and who now spend their time and money on high-priced lust in and around their city of Bakersfield. This, uh, Dan Woman, uh, is he supposed to be any good, son? I checked his records in Sacramento, Daddy. He has more state violations pending against his license than there is tobacco-stained teeth in Amarillo. I'll tell you that. He must be one of these uh, rebels who does things his own way. And I like that in a man, boy. Me too, but, uh, son, w would you mind not using my artificial heart machine to clean the mud off in your boots? Well, these plate doohickey makes a good rake. I hate to... Uh -huh. Hang on, that. that might be him. Hang on, Daddy. Well, you must be... The Dan Woman, Private Eye. Yes, sir, Mr. Woman. Come on in. Thank you for coming up on such a short notice here. It's just lucky for you that my brother's gremlin was out of the shop. Yes, sir, I guess so. Here. All right. Show me where the front desk is so I can check in. Oh, this ain't a hotel, Mr. Woman. It's my house. I see. I did tell you I charge $4,000 a day plus expenses. I believe that was $200 a day in gas money, Mr. Woman. Yeah. Now, I'd like you to get started right away. This is very important here now. Like to use your bathroom first? On the way up, I drank three gallons of Gatorade in the car. Why'd you do that? To punish my bladder. Lately, it's been releasing itself when the phone rings. I see. Who's the old coot? That's my daddy. Uh, what about the machine? That's an artificial heart machine. Hey, you're going to die, Gramps. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Uh, listen, I'll be right back. Oh, well, okay there, uh, Miss Roman. You take your time there. Well, he's a little different there, isn't he, daddy? Huh? Yeah, he sure he's is. He's a little bit different here. Hang on, I'll get in. Delivery for Mr. J.R. Baker. I'll take that punk and beat it. Oh, well, well, what is it there, son? Well, it's... Oh, it's just Sue Ellen's nose. Oh. Kidnappers must have sent it to verify they got her. I'll put it over here on the uh, table, Daddy. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's get started. All right, Mr. Woman. Hey, great. You set out for some food. No, that's my wife's nose, Mr. Woman. I wouldn't eat that. Your right. wife's nose? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay, now listen, Mr. Woman. Here's the situation uh -huh. that, uh... Uh, don't, don't answer that yet. But that's a kidnappers. Uh, I don't care. I'm a professionally trained P.I., and I'm telling you not to answer that phone. May I ask why, Mr. Woman? I just wet my pants. I see. I'll be right back. Okay, you you go do those two ears. Will oh, Dan oh, Woman get out of the bathroom in time to solve the case? Find out tomorrow. In around their city of Bakersfield. Okay, I'm ready to take that call. Uh, Mr. Woman, could you please bargain for my money, my car, my future, and my wife with your zipper shut, please? You got it, huh? Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, say, uh, is, uh, you know, Mr. Baker there? This is Dan Woman, Private Eye. From now on, you'll be dealing with me, Ace. Say, is this the Dan Woman, Private Eye from Los Angeles? I see my reputation has preceded me. Say, man, this is Eddie Lee, man. Remember me? I hired you about two years ago to follow Lolita around to see if she was faithful. Eddie Lee. Yeah, at the time I was Mustafa side Elijah O'Reilly. Of course. Eddie Lee and Lolita. How are you, my friend? Hey, hang on. Lolita! Come here, witch. It's Dan Woman, Private Eye. Remember? I sure do. He shot me in the back. Uh, Miss, Miss Woman, uh, Lolita is still carrying a little bit of a grudge. And as I recall, she's also carrying one severe case of the incurable uglies. Oh, I know it, bro. <laughs> but let's talk business. All right, my friend. 
Now, I want another one million dollars delivered to me in 30 minutes behind the trash bin in back of Joe's Juice Jungle. Okay. No, no, wait, wait. I, I owe Joe fifteen dollars because Lolita done got sick in the wine section, so I. Shut up, woman! I didn't say anything. No, no, not you, huh? <laughs> Any, anyway, let's make it behind Bubba's Booze Barn in thirty minutes. Got it. Goodbye, my friend. Wait, 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 wait. What's your, what's your deal? He wants another million. I don't have another million. I am broke. Oh? I don't have any. I got your, no, I got your fee. Uh-huh. I got your fee, Mr. Woman, but oh. that's all I got. Okay. All I can do is go talk to him and okay. see what I can work out. Go do that. Okay. Take care of that, my friend. I'll take care of him. One hour later. Well, I'm back. Well, how, how'd it go? Well, I did bring something back. My money. No. My car. No. My check. No. Not you, Ellen? Not exactly, uh... Come on in. This is ridiculous. Oh, no. Yeah, just shut up. You've got to be... You've done. You've got to be kidding me. Well, it's a start. I took her as a good faith gesture. Oh. Say, where am I supposed to sleep? I don't know. Give us a Will I Dan Woman know. wrap up all the loose ends? Find out on the conclusion next time with London and Engelman on Bakersfield. Join us. Now, Mr. Woman, this is not exactly going the way I'd like it to. Things could be worse. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm on the verge of bankruptcy. I've lost my cars, a million in cash, and now over here in the guest room, i got this ordeal going for me. What's going to happen to me? I want somebody to move and tell this and tell that out there. What am I going to do with that in there? Son, son. What is it, Daddy? I'll tell you what it'd be worse. What's that, Daddy? How about if my artificial heart machine went dead? Oh, son, do something. What do I look like, Barney Clark? I don't know about them things. Hurry, son. I don't, Hurry. Know, I don't know what to do here. Stand back, everyone. What are you going to do there, Mr. Woman? Thank well. You. Thank you, Mr. Woman. Thank you very much, Mr. Woman. No problem, old timer. But I bet you could feel the flames of hell licking at your rear end that time, huh? <laughs> Oops, there goes my bladder. Not again. I'm ruining these drawers. Oh, Mr. Uh, Woman. Get that, Mr. Pete. Oh, for Pete's sake, say. Hello. Uh, say, uh, this here, Eddie Lee, uh, your wife would like to pontificate with you. Oh, man. Yeah, talk to your man. <laughs> Hey, y'all, this is your wife, Sue Ellen Spagan. Oh, I recognize that voice, all right. It's like the sound of warts being rubbed across Velcro. Oh, Dale, I'm having a frightful time. You is. This Annie Lee person has been getting drunk and has been harassing me with a set of Lincoln logs and a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh-huh, so, I see. Oh, oh, and speaking of noses, would you please put my nose that was sent to you in the freezer so I could have it reattached when this is over? Now, uh, Mr. Baker... I am, you will find, a reasonable man. Mm-hmm. And the truth of the matter is, I miss Lolita. Well, uh, well shoot, Eddie Lee, there's not a man alive who wouldn't. That's why Lolita and me... Lolita and I... Lolita and I are running off together. I see. Uh, then I'm uh, just going to have to come directly over there and kill you. Bye. Oh, Daddy, he took the bait. He took the bait. A few minutes later... Mr. Woman, would you please hurry up, please? Shop, I'll get that. Uh, good to go afternoon. Uh, I is Eddie Lee. Yeah. And I know it's bad manners to shoot someone on first meeting. Uh, yeah, well, but you... I got to has my little leader uh, back. Now, Eddie Lee. Oh, Mr. Woman, please hurry. Now, now wait just a second here. I can assure you, Mr. 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 Lee, that we, we can work this whole thing. Drop that gun, my oh, friend. You're covered. Thank goodness you got here in time. Mm, uh, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm. Good work, Mr. Woman. Zip it up, please. Thank you very uh, much. I'll uh, take him downtown myself after he turns over your check. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here. Uh, no hard feelings, huh? Daddy, call the bank. Yes, sir, son. Oh, oh boy. I see uh, one of your cars is out front. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, uh, the money is in the back seat under some hostess fruit pie wrappers, and I would have those front brakes checked if I was you. And I believe the broad with no nose on the porch there is your wife, Mr. B. Oh, gee, uh... Shut up. Go get in there, get your nose out of the freezer, and strap it on, son, Sue Ellen. Son, son, the, ba- ba- the bank says if we get the check there by three, they'll turn the company back over to us. Daddy, we are in business. Say, uh, Mr. Baker. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, participate in any, uh, work release program? Oh, shut up, Eddie Lee. Now, now, here's your check, Mr. Woman. You did a great job. Thank you, my friend. Yes, sure, my friend. Let's go, Eddie Lee. Well, well, so, Daddy, everything turned out just dandy. Couldn't be better. What's that? It's working out here. Oh, no. Join us again next time for another lusty episode of Bakersfield.